Actually, they're trying to define yoga, but in the scientific parlance, they're calling it as quantum entanglement. It is just that we wouldn't call it entanglement, there is a quantum coherence. See, uh, your idea of what is memory have to evolve. Right now your idea of memory used to be, till recently, is just what you remember. But now your idea of memory has become more technology oriented. You use the word memory more with reference to your gadgets than to yourself these days. Your idea of memory has shifted that things can have memory. Hundred years ago, nobody thought things can have memory, isn't it? Only living creatures can have memory. How can a thing have memory? But now things have memory. They have more memory than you, better memory than you. So that's a huge shift in human understanding of memory. Now we're talking about water having memory. Why go in installments, water, fire, earth, this one, that one? Uh, let's go a little further. They're using a very negative term. Actually, they're trying to define yoga, but in the scientific parlance, they're calling it as quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement means there is one subatomic particle here. There is another one somewhere a million light years away. You can't imagine what that is, but that far away. But these two are connected. They have no explanation why, all right? The word yoga means just this. It is just that we wouldn't call it entanglement, there is a quantum coherence. The universe or creation or cosmos is entirely coherent. This happens across the universe right now. This does not mean, did this sound reach the ends of cosmos? No, not like that. But they are coherent. Nothing here is happening unconnected. If you find coherence, suddenly you have certain mastery over things. In yoga, we call this prajna. Prajna travels faster than light because it doesn't travel, it's just everywhere. Like I'm talking about this being, this being cannot travel, it's everywhere, so it need not travel. You can call it divine, you can call it God, you can call it being, you can call it prajna, or you can quantum… you can call it quanta. But essentially, because it's everywhere, it looks like the same thing is happening everywhere, that means it traveled from here to there, there to there, no. It's everywhere, so it need not travel. This is what being also means, that there is nowhere to go because everything is here. Everything is here. For one who is willing, everything is here. For one who comes in installments, installments means you have to go from one to another, another to another. That's a nice way of saying it, generally I say it's a constipation. When life happens in installments, then it's a problem. Because how many installments do you want to break this life into? Because the nature of life is such that if you break it into a billion installments, still it will not be complete, the picture is not complete. Because it's all here, it's not in one, two, three, four, five. So, if water has memory, does stone have memory? Of course. Does air have memory? Of course. 
But that will sound ridiculous because where is the memory in the air? Well, see, all of you today are using phones. It is not wired, it's coming through the air, isn't it? Hello? Memory is traveling through the air, so is there memory in the air? You shouldn't even ask me that question anymore because all of you are using the applications. But that is still rudimentary compared to how the cosmos is. It is not that something is traveling from somewhere to somewhere, there is nowhere to travel because what you call as everywhere and nowhere are not two different things. There is no somewhere, that's all. There is everywhere and there is nowhere. Somewhere is an illusion. But right now, somewhere is the only reality you have. Everywhere and nowhere is an illusion in your experience, isn't it? Hello? Somewhere is reality, I am somewhere. Am I nowhere? Am I everywhere? That is the whole thing. Everywhere and nowhere are the re reality. Somewhere is an illusion. See right now, you are a somebody. Hello? Not today, after hundred years, all of you. Me a little sooner, but all of you one hundred years later, if we bury all of you right here, there is no somebody, there is just the same garden. <laughs> Hello? Yes or no? There is no your body and my body, there is just a body of earth. So, the just the difference is, do you realize that now or will you realize that when it happens? This is not just with the earth, this is with the whole creation. You are either one with it or you are not. This is not an imagination. I go on thinking I am one with the cosmos, you will go nuts. But that's how it is. When it happens experientially, it is tremendous. When it happens psychologically, you will lose it. If psychologically, if you think I'm everywhere, I'm everywhere, you're a serious problem. Psychologically, physiologically, you're somewhere. But the fundamental reality is this. So this whole process of segmenting this and saying is, oh, there is memory in water, we accept it. But is there memory in air? Is there memory in fire? Is a keyhole vision of life. If you go on looking at life like this, if you stay here for a billion years, still you will know a tiny piece of it, that's all. Nothing wrong, but it's most inefficient way to exist. Because we are interested in application, we are not interested in knowing. How can I use it? Need-driven. All scientific research right now is need-driven. How can we use it? What can we do? Can I make a new kind of gun that I can just burn you without wasting a bullet on you? We are experimenting with all that, come on. Hello? Right now they've come up with bombs which will explode. All the buildings will be intact, only human beings die. Yes, because it's a frequency bomb, it just kills the human beings. Buildings will be safe, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> See, when you want to conquer a, another country, people are dead, infrastructure is there, isn't it a good way? We are need-driven, this is the problem. Everything we come to know, we will use it in more and more devious ways. So, when you're need-driven, you must understand knowingly, unknowingly, you become destructive. What is wrong being need-driven? Nothing wrong if you were one more creature. Nothing wrong if you were a grasshopper, because creatures are need-driven. But once you get to this level of cerebral activity, this level of capability, if you are need-driven, the only place we will go to is destruction. There is simply no other place to go. So, when society or individual human beings are need-driven, they don't realize this in their own time, 
that they are super destructive. Because need is not a path that will end somewhere, it's an endless path. Being is not like that, the destination is right here. You don't have to go anywhere, the destination is right here, it is not light years away. When there is coherence between a subatomic particle, a brainless subatomic particle has coherence with another one a million light years away, with this big brain, you must be able to find coherence, isn't it, with everything in the universe. This is called yoga. Yoga means union. Union means you are in coherence with the whole creation. Nothing to do because you're already fully equipped and here. Just learning to use the equipment without messing yourself up, that's all.